Denial of service is a technique to destroy the availability of a device. It can be used to disrupt a website, a network application, operational technology device, a SCADA system. Any device can be targeted by a denial of service attack. It destroys the availability. So if we think of that CIA triangle, confidentiality, integrity, and availability, denial of service is designed to disrupt availability. It's usually done by sending a large volume of access requests or large volumes of packets to a target all at once to overload that target and disrupt its ability to perform its normal operations. A common form of denial of service attacks, which you'll normally see in the news, are what are called distributed denial of service attacks. A distributed denial of service attack is different from a denial of service attack because it uses a botnet. Now, a botnet is a group of devices that's all been infected by a certain type of malware, that malware designed to recruit that device into a botnet. A lot of times you'll find Internet of Things devices, embedded systems, things like printers or smart devices recruited to be in one of these botnets because it's very easy to compromise those devices. There's not a lot of security on those devices to start with. Now there are some forms of botnets that are almost voluntary and they're used by organizations, they're used by um, hacktivists or people trying to be part of a hacking community, for example. Low Orbit Ion Cannon is one example, it's an open source software, you can get it on GitHub and you can voluntarily join Low Orbit Ion Cannon. It can be used for stress testing but it also can be used to allow you to join a botnet community or a voluntary, voluntary botnet to allow your devices to be performed or used in distributed denial of service attacks, often for political reasons or uh, to promote a certain cause, hacktivist activities as we would normally say. One of the main ways in which a denial of service or distributed denial of service attack works is through IP spoofing. Just like this sounds, IP spoofing is whenever you change the IP address that's assigned to the device or you trick a device into thinking that the sender's IP address is different from what it actually is. This can help protect an attacker or a hacker from being, having their illegal activities discovered. It can also be used in conjunction with other techniques to make a more uh, complex tech, uh, type of attack. There's a bunch of different types of denial of service attacks. There's different techniques for doing this. You can use different types of packets, different protocols. Internet control message protocol, for example, ICMP. Uh, Smurf attacks, they're called. Uh, use ICMP packets with spoofed addresses. So you're basically tricking the target. Uh, you're, you're tricking a bunch of devices into sending an ICMP reply to a target. And that's a, a certain type of technique that we're going to talk about in a moment. The SYN flood attack, similar type of technique, but with SYN packets. So when you establish a TCP connection, you start with a SYN packet, you receive response, a SYN acknowledge or ACK packet, and then you respond with an acknowledge packet. So what happens is the attack will send SYN packets, and then the SYN acknowledge packet is sent back but there's no uh, response. So a lot of times what the hacker will do is they'll send SYN packets with a spoofed IP to a bunch of different targets, and then those, those targets will send a reply, an SYN, pack, ACK, an SYN ACK packet back to what they think is the, the uh, sender in the first place. In reality, the attacker has spoofed that address and all of these devices have now been tricked into performing a denial of service attack on a third party. You can also have IP fragmentation attacks, sometimes called teardrop attacks, where you send a packet that's uh, overlapping or it's too large to fit all the information in one packet. And then a ping of death is just an incredibly large amount of information, a packet with a large amount of information that's usually larger than the allowed limit. These types of attacks should be able to be stopped with a good firewall, uh, but they can be helpful against devices that are not, not designed with security in mind. So you know, SCADA devices, industrial control system devices can still be 
uh, vulnerable to simple attacks like this. And sometimes these attacks would work regardless. A UDP flood is also, it's very similar to an SYN flood, except it uses a UDP packet, user datagram protocol instead of a SYN packet. Now, two main types of attacks are amplification Amplification and reflection. Amplification here is where you, the attacker is going to be tricking a third party into sending a larger response, a, a response with a larger payload than what they initially sent. So the idea here is the attacker can send small amounts of data to trick a bunch of different targets into sending a disproportionately larger reply and again, that, that hacker has spoofed their IP address to be the IP address of the third party, the actual target. So the attacker sends out small amounts of data, for example, maybe a DNS request, and then they receive a response with a larger payload, and that response is then sent to the target here instead of the attacker. So the attacker is spoofing their IP, they're sending, hey, could you send me these, I'm requesting DNS information, please send the response to this address, that's my address. In reality, that address is the target that the hacker wants to have the denial of service attack target. Same type of premise with reflection attacks. Uh, the attacker is tricking a resource into sending requested information to the target. Sometimes you'll see these attacks listed as amplification slash reflection attacks, sometimes they're the same. If you're tricking a target to sending uh, packets or information back, a connection request back to your intended and now service target, that's gonna be a reflection attack. And oftentimes the amplification attacks are reflection attacks. Sometimes you can do amplification where you're not tricking the response back from the uh, the target you're forwarding a response to your intended target. So it can be slightly different, but a lot of times these are very similar and they can be combined. Amplification always involves increasing the size of the payload. So that's the main difference there. If you have to differentiate an amplification attack from a reflection attack. So a good example, like a SYN flood that we talked about, that's a reflection attack. Attacker spoofing their IP address to be the same as the target. They're sending SYN packets to multiple devices, multiple servers, and then they're spoofing that response IP address. So those servers are sending the SYNAC packets back to target A and because they've been tricked into thinking that that's where the, response, where the request came from initially, where the SYN packets came from initially. So target A then becomes overwhelmed and disrupted by these uh, SYN ACK packets. Now, lots of devices can be targeted by distributed denial of service attacks or denial of service attacks. Oftentimes they're used to make a political statement for targeting websites. You'll see, may oftentimes see in the news that a certain website was taken down by hackers. Usually that means it's taken down because of a denial of service attack. The web server is overwhelmed. Uh, this can be, it can be like government agencies can be targeted like this especially local or state government that may not have the most robust IT infrastructure, may not have uh, much use for having a robust web server for their, their website, you know, like the city, uh, city of Gary, Indiana, might not have a, an amazing website with IT infrastructure to back it up to withstand distributed now service attacks. So you know, a hacktivist group or a hacking group can make a statement by taking that website offline probably sure to make the news in some sense and in that way that hacktivist group is making a political statement it, have they really compromised any of the data on the network no they've but they've destroyed the availability of the website so they have in some way disrupted or uh, affected the reputation of that that organization or that government so that's oftentimes where you'll see distributed analysis service attacks used these can also be used if in a military sense, if we there's a cyber warfare application where you take certain systems offline, you take critical infrastructure, operational technology, equipment offline, 
power equipment, uh, wastewater, water utility, things of that nature can be targeted by the style of service attacks causing disruptions to power, the ability to deliver utility services to the general public or to military installations. And that can be a major application of this if we talk about this from a cyber warfare standpoint. Hackers, usually what you'll see in the news is using them in a hacktivist type standpoint, but if we think about it from a cyber warfare standpoint, you can cause distributed now service tax to disrupt drone communication, communication to uh, aerial assets, satellites, operational technology equipment, any, any type of network that is used to control a device or a series of devices can be targeted. So those are the main methods of denial of service, the main targets, and I appreciate you watching the video and I hope you learned something today. Thanks so much. Have a great day.